everybody, welcome. Thank you, Lorna. Thank you. Just listen to the sounds of the crystal alchemies. Um, I'm just playing for a few minutes so that people can have a chance to, to join this evening. sounds of the crystal alchemies when we bring just attention and just allow the sounds to come to us are very pure what I love about the crystal bowls and I, I did start with Tibetan bowls as many people do um, was this feeling of us moving much more to a crystalline based body um, that made the purity of these sounds really resonant for me, but also a deep remembrance of the crystal temples in Atlantis and a real sense that they were played. The crystal temples had sound. Um, and there is something that really resonates deep within our being with the sound that is created through the crystal. Uh, frequencies so and they of course enjoy working with the roses the roses are pentagram in geometry that's their very nature they open their five sepals just like you would draw a five-pointed star not in any way consecutively or all at once it's not a you know, a kapow as the um, sepals around the bud open. No, they open in the way that you would draw a five-pointed star. And from that, the blossom just explodes in the form of the golden mean. So for those of you that are familiar with geometry, will know that within a five-pointed star in the pentagram, is embedded a ratio called the golden mean, ratio of one to 1.61803. And this is the ratio that relates to the dance of Venus in the heavens. So you can see how Venus and the heart might be connected, but also that uh, it's been proven that the heart in love resonates to 1 to 1.61803 as well. So we can see that the rose and Venus and the heart all dance together in this same beautiful golden mean ratio. And that is the growth proportion of our bodies. It is the growth proportion in nature. So we can see how certain sounds and that sense of beauty and that connection to the rose, the rose of mystica, this mystery at the heart of the rose that speaks to us of the mystery of love, the mystery of life. And so this is where the magic is. This is what draws me to the, to the rose and to the beauty of the sounds. So welcome everybody. Um, it's really lovely that you've been able to join this evening and join live. We uh, have just gone through a little bit earlier today the zenith of the, um, the full moon. 
And I have to say that I wasn't in a place last evening that I could do the rose reading. Uh, some of you know who have followed me through my uh, personal Facebook page that my one and only sister passed away on Sunday afternoon. So it's been a very tricky few days to navigate that really big shift in that in a, that outer landscape. And um, you know, she's been poorly for a couple of years, but nevertheless, to find yourself as the one sole survivor of your own little familial pod um, and the older of the two sisters <laughs> has been a really um, challenging place to be. And it's significant, I feel, that um, you, this full moon is um, an extremely potent way shower and at this 16 degrees pattern that we've had of the full moons just like we've had the one degree pattern of the new moons and I think it is um, Pam Gregory that speaks of the fact that the 16th card in the tarot deck is the tower so we know that much of what we have had as familiar in our lives is um, is falling away. There are big changes that we are navigating our way through, especially as we move through March. Um, many see March as one of the, being one of the most significant, so I've got a cat here that is wanting attention to, um, but many see March as being the, one of the most significant months of the year for um, for change. And partly because Saturn has also changed signs so um, probably about the time that we're speaking, Saturn has made this, this movement from Aquarius into Pisces. So this is, um, you know, such a powerful big shift. Um, Saturn has got about a 29 to 30 year orbit. So the last time it went into Pisces, was around the time of 93, 94, and perhaps into 95, because Saturn does a dance um, as it moves over that threshold. And so you might want to review exactly what was going on in your life. Was there anything significant that was going on in your life at that particular point? Now, for me, it was, um, the most significant full body mystical experience that I've had um, of this lifetime. So there was this shift, an absolute shift of um, a felt experience, a visceral felt experience of um, an inflowing energy of divine light. And it also coincided with the beginning of the end of my 19 year marriage. So I'm really wondering what um, what Saturn is going to bring. And as an Aquarius sun and a Pisces moon, um, <laughs> Saturn has been moving its way through Aquarius for this, um, since I think about 2008. Um, and um, it's now going on, uh, now um, moving on into Pisces. And um, and also we've got um, Pluto changing signs a little bit later in the month too, alongside the spring equinox. So the spring equinox is absolutely a powerhouse for us as well. So I think one of the big questions is, you know, uh, a, a full moon is, is always about a culmination. It's always of what's complete what is being what is given all of its juice or what is it that you can release out on this full moon what's completed and you know what's come to closure what is what is it that this cycle is bringing to closure and in that how are you preparing for this this equinox because the this equinox will be one of the most powerful portals that we've experienced. So what is it that is still wanting to be refined and aligned? What is it that's calling for your attention to enable you to be in the, in the best position you can be internally 
to receive the blessings that are available as we move into this Equinox portal. We've all been honing our craft, you know, we've, we, we have gifts that we have been drawn to, um, different technologies that we've been drawn to, different modalities that we've been drawn to. And I've always felt that, uh, that there's a past life recall for many of us, a known nurse of a frequency um, of, that we've perhaps trained in in previous lifetimes, had mastery of previous lifetimes, that we find ourselves being presented with in this lifetime, even if it's come in a different package. Many of us have picked up again um, in this journey. I, I started with Reiki in 93, known energy for me. I then went on to Sakem, an Egyptian frequency of energy healing. That was very much uh, a remembrance, a soul remembrance for me. And then uh, when I was sent the details of pranic healing and I looked at the, the um, picture of Master Chua Kok Sui, and I absolutely recognised the violet energy around him and recognised that he had been an Egyptian teacher of mine, um, which sent me out on a journey to find him. So we've, we, have, we have been drawing around us these frequencies that we are aligned to, that we have been working with our own healing along this journey. I mean, even with the roses, you know, more and more I have come to understand that when they came to me in 210, this was very much a pathway of healing that I was remembering and, and um, bringing forward again. And as much for my own healing as for, you know, what I was going to be able to take out in the world. So we've been all doing our work. You know, this has been the journey particularly since 2012, in that Venus cycle from 2012 to 2020. Really powerful time for integrating and um, uh, coming into that sense of authentic self and being able to express it in a way that felt right. So these have been really potent and powerful times for us to work our way through. This equinox feels that it's offering us another invitation. You know, what are you, what are you ready to step into now? What is the piece that you've already come to start to bring into form? What are you wanting to bring into form? If you look at this movement of Saturn into Pisces, Saturn is about structure. How are you going to make your dreams? Pisces ethereal dream quality to it. How are you going to make that into um, something that is tangible, that, that, that will be able to have a foundation to it to take out into the world? It's interesting that since I've been here, my journey has taken me very much in connection with an energy called, of a sacred, sacred site here in Somerset on the edge of Avalon uh, with a sacred site called Burrow Mump. And I have spoken of Borough Monk before on these um, these rose readings. And um, the energies that I connected with at Borough Monk that came forward were these um, five energies that called themselves the elemental rose dragons. That they had come from the 5D heart of Gaia and that they were calling us into a remembrance of the connection of this vehicle, this vessel, and the elements that make up this vessel, and the fact that they are the same elements that are within the earth. Her body is our body. And the more we are able to connect with these qualities of energy within us, these elemental energies within us, the more our sense of foundation is within ourselves, the more aligned we are, the more we are able to allow this vessel to take in the higher keys and codes of light 
that are being gifted us through the photonic light and the um, CMEs and flares, the X-class flares, flares M-class flares that are uh, arriving on the planet. And we've, many of us have seen the beautiful uh, Northern Lights um, displays that have come up I mean, so far south this time that we can tell that there is change that is coming even in the quality of the prana, the quality of the light that we are receiving. Even the sun, the, ray, the light from the sun seems to be different. So how can we refine and align a little bit more and a little bit more that allows us to hold even greater um, light quotient at this time? So this is why for me the crystal bowls, this is why for me working with rose energies and particularly if you can put the rose energies that you are drawn to work with, with a glass of water on them to um, take on the coding of that particular frequency and be able to work it in the body at a cellular level offers us another insight. So let's have a look and see what the roses might offer us as wisdom for this particular full moon. So the first rose that's come forward is rose three. Now rose three sits on the spleen chakra. Obviously I'm reversed on this camera, but it's lower left ribs. Under the lower left ribs and in the Chinese system, uh, spleen and pancreas energy are, are connected. So what do we know of the spleen and what do we know of the pancreas and what has this rose got to tell us about that particular aspect of self? Pancreas is all about producing the insulin, being able to digest the sweetness in life. So this rose is calling us to joy. She's saying, what can you incorporate in your life on a day-to-day -day basis that will bring you more joy? She's like effervescent, this bubbly effervescent energy. The spleen is a filter for the blood, but it also is the place in which these higher frequency light, light is received by the body um, through the, 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 the spleen and the colour rays prismed out into the different energy centres of the body. So the spleen is really, really important. The more we are able to process the sweetness in life, the more we are able to open to the joy, the more we can maintain our frequency. And it is said that frequency is the language of God. You know, this is the language God speaks by. So when we can keep our frequency high. Oh, hi, Saul. Hello. Hi, Catherine, too. Um, then we can we can hold a real sense of a good immune system and an efficient functioning of the um, the pancreas and this digestion of the sweetness in life. How do we receive? How do we open to receive even more of the sweetness in life, the joy, the lightness of, of the path. So I'm just going to invite you just to put a hand on your higher heart and just breathe in the sweetness that this rose offers, the joy that this rose offers, the opening to joy. And joy is one of the ways that we can really keep our frequency high 
I know so many that are struggling with um, health issues, digestive issues, insomnia, um, aches and pains. You know, the body is having to work really hard to process these um, higher frequencies of light. We have to do our bit to, to elevate our frequency to be able to match and to receive and allow these energies to be absorbed in the body. So just breathe her in and just welcome her reminder to, to seek the joy, open to the joy. I find beauty, recognising beauty, just being able to stand and watch the birds or just being able to see the new shoots of spring coming in the in the lanes around the cottage here you know it's just a reminder that nature just does her thing she just moves from season to season and does her thing and we can find beauty in that really fresh green bud we can find beauty in the daffodils um, and be in the moment to acknowledge that Let's see what our second rose is. Rose Bagua 2. Now, Rose Bagua 2 sits in the top right hand corner of the, the Bagua, which is a feng shui term. It's a box of nine squares. And it is very much about our expression in the world. I think I have said before, rows one, two and three of the Rose Oracle, because the Rose Oracle is part of is a seven part um, set of, uh, of energies. And Rose ba the Rose Bagua is rows four. And rows one, two and three are all vertical. They're all about clearing this internal verticality for us to be able to bring heaven on earth to be this conduit that allows for the higher keys and codes of light to come in through the body and anchor down through into the earth star and, in, and into the grids of the earth so we have a we're a bridging point the rose bagua is the first set that goes horizontal and it goes what's my heartfelt expression in these different aspects of my life and this rose sits on a diagonal of of the lover in this particular in the rose bagua and so she is all about right relationship she's all about reminding us that the more authentic we are know thyself and to thine own self be true when we are authentic when we are in alignment with what is true for us, our relationships mirror that. They become more authentic, they become deeper, they become richer, they become much more um, compassionate and open to the fact that we, we haven't walked in another's shoes. We do not know their story. But if we are integrous and we are true to our own story, then we hold that frequency that will enable others to have permission to be true to themselves with us. It removes games playing. It removes drama dances. It removes passive aggressive. It brings us into this place of authenticity with ourselves. So it's about right relationship with self first, but it's about also our relationships in the world. So you can start to see that these two are reminding us of joy and how we show up in the world in our frequency alignment. But it's then how do we take that into relationship? How are we with the other? So you might like to just pause for a minute, put hand on higher heart and just ask or invite her to show you anywhere where there is a refinement that's needed. 
in your relationship with yourself or in your relationship with others. And just take a breath in and just follow that breath down into the heart and just let the heart soften with the frequency of this rose. And say so you might want to follow that by another breath and just breathing in joy, breathing in light. And if you make the out breath just a little bit longer than the in breath, it allows for the central nervous system to soften and for the frequency of those roses to be received because ultimately and I think I've said this many times before this these were never they were these were never uh, designed as a divination deck they were designed as a healing pathway a journey home to self journey home to authentic self journey home to the rose heart actually and the third rose this evening is rose 11 and this beauty sits she's in the first rose set as was rose three the first rose this is rose 11 and she sits on the heart and you can see this golden energy you know you'll notice that she's got some shadows there's still some pieces that have that she's reminding us of, of the shadows but look at the gold in the center you know this this for me hmm, she sits on the front of the um the heart the heart chakra and the solar plexus have a front a front heart and a back heart, front solar plexus and a back solar plexus in this particular system. So she is radiant and she is a real beauty and a strength to work with. So she starts at the heart and then she moves to the crown because the crown can only open to the degree that the heart is, which is why the work of our, our inner work around the heart and healing the trauma wounds of the heart are the most important things that we can focus on because as the heart opens the crown opens and as the crown opens we are able to receive the keys and codes of light that we have stored in previous lifetimes in higher dimensional aspects of self so the more the heart is open, the more resolved the heart is and um, aligned and open to that fifth dimensional field of presence of unconditional love, the state of being love rather than doing love, being love and from that place being able to be love in action. So she's calling us to hold a real sense of heart-centered focus going through this uh, full moon portal and into this shift of Saturn into Pisces. How do we hold this heart-centered presence when there is such a lot of change going on in our, our outer landscape? How do we hold a steadiness? And this is one of the roses that is a real beauty to work with in order to hold that sense of steadiness. You'll see she's really quite balanced. It's, you know, she's, she's a very um, powerfully balanced form of a rose. They give us so much information. As I say, you know, this reminder that there can, still can be shadows, even in the beauty. There can still be shadows that are, we, we're being called to work with. But when we look at something that is a very pristine form, we can hold that frequency of beauty. 
So these are our three roses for this particular period going into um, our solstice energy. So we've got rose three, who's calling us as a reminder to joy. Where can I, where can I create much more space for joy in my day-to-day -day life? because it's in the joy and the open heart that our frequency stays high and clear. Focusing in on relationships, Rose Bagua too. Is there anything that we can refine and align with our relationship to self and our relationship to others that would bring more joy <laughs> and perhaps grace and ease in the process? and a reminder to stay in the heart, in this golden, you know, focus in on the center, into this field of gold. The ancient mystery schools, their work was very much around the gold and the golden heart, the golden light body. How do we find this frequency that we can, we can be with? that actually, and it goes back to what I, when I, as I started in this um, reading this evening, and, and speaking about the golden mean, speaking about the, um, the frequency of the Rosa Mystica, this golden heart of the rose. Each ro rose holds a golden heart. And what she's asking us to is to find that place within ourselves. And this rose is just a beautiful reminder. So what else have I got to share this evening? Um, I'm doing the first meditation with um, the Rose Dragons at Knowlton Church for the um, uh, Equinox celebration down in Dorset on the 19th of uh, March. I've got um, something that I'm doing at a at Burrow Mump on the twentieth. Um, there is uh, there are three spaces left here in the Rose Temple for a visioning day, um, a Sacred Rose visioning day on the twenty first on the equinox. Um, there is a new five month program with the Rose Dragons, the Elemental Rose Dragons which will be up on my website live in the next couple of days. My lovely web tech man in designer is in the process of crafting the pages. And that is a five month journey that will go from the 20th of April round to the autumn equinox. And that feels really special. We're going to be working with um, one of the elements, earth, air, fire and water and ether one element a month, working with the platonic solids, working with sacred geometry, working with the um, frequency of the brain, um, alpha, beta, th delta, th theta and gamma. And um, it'll be a really special program actually, it's a brand new program. And I've got some, I've got a dowsing day that the date will coming in, be coming in um, soon. And yeah, some really lovely things coming up. And there's, there's a talk for the Pythagorean Society coming up. And I'm also doing an interview on the 18th of March um, with the Sacred Blueprint um, group, Sacred Blueprint for the New Earth. So I'm gonna be talking about the roses and working with the roses in my um, uh, house whispering, my space alchemy work and also working with the land energies and the um, dragon nodes that are opening so there's there's a lot coming up there's a lot happening um and um gradually all of that information will be on the website on the rosealchemy.com website it's just that it takes time to get all of the techno done So 
the bowls just wanted to play this evening. Thank you for joining me this evening. I don't know, I really feel to say as a keynote to, you know, there's a lot of people that are going through some really difficult things right now. And if we can be compassionate, if we can be kind, it's probably the most that we can probably uh, do. Thank you for joining. Much love and rosy blessings.